How are you guys doing? Today is Friday, April 2nd, 2021, out here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to do an elite individual profile on Pascal Siakam, also known as Spicy P, who is the starting power forward for the Toronto Raptors, who has had probably one of the wildest journeys to the NBA that, I mean, there really ever really, that there ever really can be. Uh, he was a player that made it all the way down to the D League. He came all the way back up to the NBA, and he's been an All Star, a champion, and the Most Improved Player of the Year. I just think just because the way that just the way he was able to, no, he he was able to overcome the adversity that he was able to overcome to get to the point to where he is now. I like his story, and with that said, and with and with that said, I I'm going to just provide context as to. I, I, I'm gonna provide context as well as his achievements as an, and his accomplishments up until now to, um, to just to understand, give just to give words, just to uh, recount the narrative of Pascal Siakam's career from the beginning up until now. So just to start off, he's camp. So if you're unfamiliar with Pascal Siakam, he's about let's say about six foot nine, six foot ten. He's about 220, 230. He's pretty skinny, but he's a little bit more muscular than you think. He's originally from Cameroon, and he's um and he's I kind of like that he's kind of in this new generation of players that were kind of able to find their way uh from Africa and I don't know, just 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 work their way to finding a way to the college level and to make it to the NBA. He would eventually go to New Mexico State, and once he made it to New Mexico State, he would have to redshirt his first season, uh, but to, he would end up winning freshman of the year honors, and then in his second year, he would average about 20 points and 11 rebounds to help his team make it all the way to the tournament. They would lose in the first round, but the fact that Siakam was able to help get his team there, he was able to become the WAC Player of the Year in 2016. He was an honorable mention All American for how for how well he played um, for for New Mexico State. He established himself as a good enough prospect to be taken with the 27th overall pick in the 2016 NBA Draft, and of course, the holder of those of that draft pick was the Toronto Raptors, a team that were. That now we're really, really close to entering the championship picture, but they were always kind of they were all they they were one piece away, and of course they had to get through LeBron James in order to do so. That was a very tough feat in itself. So, um, Pascal Siakam's NBA career started in his age twenty two season in twenty sixteen seventeen. He would start thirty eight games of the thirty five. Uh, of the 55 games that he would play um but for the Raptors he would only average about 15 minutes a game and tour you and maybe average about maybe four points three rebounds not even a steal not even a block per game uh but he would get he would eventually move to play for the Raptors um G League affiliate the Raptors 905 and in 2017 he would actually help them win the D League finals and he would be named the finals MVP in the D League after averaging 23 points and 9 rebounds for the series and after being named the D League finals MVP of course he's never seen the D he, he has never even caught a whiff of the D-League ever since and ever since he's been in a, a prime time NBA player his next season he would come off the bench and in his age 23 season he would start five of the 81 games he would play for in a season where the Raptors would finish with the best record in the East they had nine more wins than they did the previous season when they really weren't playing with Pascal Siakam like that and this was the year that Dwayne Casey was named the coach of the year right before the Toronto Raptors before the Toronto Raptors actually fired him. But in the season, he would see himself averaging about 20 minutes a game. He see his points per game rise from 4.2 to 7.3. His rebounds went up from 3.4 to 4.5. His assists went up from 0.3 to 2. His steals went up from 0.5 to 0.8. His blocks dropped from 0.8 to 0.5. Oh well. All while shooting about 50% from the field, 22% from three, and about 62% from the line. That season, the Raptors would go on to make the playoffs. And in this season, they would end up beating the Wizards in the first round in six. But they ended up getting swept by the Cavs in the conference semifinals. This was And this was LeBron's last year of playing in the East. And once he left, that would eventually 
clear a path for Pascal Siakam to eventually make his way to, or that would clear a path for the Toronto Raptors to eventually make it to the NBA Finals to jump into that to, into that spot. So this would transition into Pascal Siakam's third season with Toronto, his age 24 season in 2018-19, where he finally became a full-time starter. He started 79 of the 80 games he would play in a season where the Raptors would finish with a or they would finish with a 58 and 24 record. They had one less game than the previous season, but they finished with the best record in the or but they, they finished with the second best record in the East, uh, just missing out on the top spot. Um, in this season, Pascal Siakam would see his minutes per game increase from 20.7 to 31.9. At the same time, his points per game would increase from 7.3 to 16.9, almost eight, almost averaging 10 more points per game. His rebounds per game went from 4.5 to 6.9, averaging 2.2.5 more rebounds a game. His assists went up from 2 to 3.1. His seals were, were stayed at about 0.9. His blocks went up a bit to 0.7. Seven, all while shooting his field goal percentage went up from 50.8 to 54.9 his three-point percentage went from 22 percent to 36.9 percent all while attempting one more three per game and at the same time his free throw percentage went up from 62 percent to 78 percent while attempting two and a half more free throw per attempts per game this incredible increase was of course noticed by the NBA as in two, as in 2019 he was named the MLB the NBA's most improved players as he jumped to becoming a um, a, a player that could definitely be relied upon on one of the most dangerous teams in the Eastern Conference Throughout the and that was through the regular season, even though he didn't make the playoffs. Once they made the playoffs, the Raptors would end up beating the Orlando Magic. By the way, this is the this is the season when Kawhi Leonard joined the Toronto Raptors when DeMar DeRozan was traded to Zach was traded to San Antonio. But yes, like I said, in the first round they would beat the Magic in five. In the second round, they would beat the Sixers in seven, because that's when Kawhi Leonard hit the hit the game winning shot and the the one that just hung on the rim they would beat the milwaukee bucks in the eastern conference finals and then they would end up beating the warriors in six games where Kawhi leonard would win the finals mvp and for the and so far for the only time in his career pascal siakam was able to win an nba championship with the toronto with the toronto raptors and that was Oh, yeah, that that in itself was a very surreal moment, and the fact that he went from being the NBA, the D League Finals MVP, to being one of the contributing members of the NBA Finals, that was when, of course, his career, I believe, took off, and of course, gave him the moment, it, it, and it gave him the confidence and the momentum that would lead him to earning his very first All Star appearance the very next season. This would lead us into the into 2019-20, which was the last full season that was completed in the NBA. This is the season that, of course, was affected by COVID. Towards the end of the season, there was about a three, four month hiatus uh, in the season, but he would end up playing 60 of, or he would end up starting all 60 of the games he would play in a 72 game season. The Raptors would finish with a 53 and 19 record. They had the second best record in the entire Eastern Conference. And this is, of course, the year after Kawhi left. So Pascal Siakam was probably one of the primary go to guys alongside Kyle Lowry for the very first time in his career. And in this season, he would see his minutes per game increase from 31.9 to 35.2, the first time he ever averaged 35 minutes a game. He see his points per game increase from 16.9 to 22.9. His rebounds went up from 6.9 to 7.3. His assists went up from 3.1 to 3.5. For the first time, he was averaging at least a steal per game. His blocks went up to 0.9, the highest they'd ever been in his career. Um, from the field, he was shooting 45%, which is a big drop from the previous season where he was averaging 54.9 but he was also taking seven more shots per game averaging 18 field goal attempts uh he was also he, his three-point percentage would actually kind of level out he would he would it would drop from 36.9 to 35.9 as he went on to average three and a half more three-pointers taken per game he would also see his free throw percentage increase as he would see himself take about a free throw and a half more per game 
So you'd see him improving in all facets of his game as he starts to play more minutes, as he has more responsibilities on his shoulders. And in 2019-20, like I said, he was named to his very first he was named to his very first All-Star game ever in his career in his age 25 season. And once they made the playoffs, the Raptors would go on to sweep the Nets in the first round. But this was, of course, before they had Kevin Durant. This is when Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving were out due to injury. Um, but then they were also, And then they went to the semifinals where they eventually lost to the Boston Celtics in seven. And then this season, Nick Nurse was the coach of the year. For the boss, for the Toronto Raptors having such a great record after Kawhi Leonard had gone, and of course they had to give it to him after he won the championship. So, with that said, that's how that that was how the that was how the last season finished out for Pascal Siakam. Um, but all following that season, it would transition into this current season where. Pascal Siakam is in the middle of a season where the Toronto Raptors are holding on, where they're they're fighting really tough, they're fighting hard for playoff positioning. Right now, they are holding on to the fifth worst record in the Eastern Conference. They have now lost nine of their last ten games. They've lost their last four. They currently sit five games out of the playoff picture, as for some reason they're completely sliding. So far, Pascal Siakam started thirty nine games, uh, out of the. 49 out of the 48 games that the Raptors have played he's seeing his minutes per game set about the same but a lot of his numbers are taking dips his points per game is dipped from about 22.9 to 20 points per game but he's still averaging 20 a game his rebounds are are about the same at 7.4 he's actually seeing his assists increase from 3.5 to 4.7 his steals are at about the are about the same as he's seeing his blocks dip to about 0.6 he's still averaging 1.1 steals uh, he's shooting 44% from the field, just a tick below what he was doing last year. He's shooting 29% from three, which is a six point, which is a six percent drop from last year. And from the foul line, he's shooting 82% from the feet, from the foul line for the very first time in his career. So I mean, he's seeing his points dip, but he's seeing a lot of his other production increase. I think a lot of it just comes with the pressures of, of, of dealing with. Of, of 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 becoming of having more responsibilities placed on his shoulders i think it'll be a learning curve he'll get over eventually but as of right now he seems to be playing incredibly well and he seems to be one of the few rays of consistency in this raptors team even though he didn't make the all-star game this season i still think that he is one of the better players in basketball and he's definitely a player that continues to show out um, so far, if you once again, I want to thank everyone once again for listening to this piece. Today is Friday, April second, two thousand twenty-one. Out here in this quarantine, um, I'm James Sims. If you ever get a chance, check out Spicy P. He's currently wearing number forty-three, and he's even playing against the Golden State Warriors today. And considering he played on, considering he played on Wednesday, I imagine he's gonna play today. With that said, um, I want to thank everyone once again for listening to all 13 minutes of this piece. I hope all is well, uh, and then I will catch you with more. I'll, I'll catch you with more profiles down the road. Today is Friday, April 2nd, 2021, out here in this quarantine. Um, this is The Elite, and I'm James Sims. Thanks for listening to this piece. Peace out.